Hello everyone, welcome to study ETEC. In the previous videos, we discussed single phase and three phase half controlled and full controlled rectifier. There we learned how to analyze different rectifier circuits, how to derive different mathematical expressions. Also we learned how to draw different waveforms. But in those cases, we did not consider something called the source impedance. We took the input to be the ideal one. But in reality, in the source side, there will be some impedance. And if it is so, how the behavior of the circuit changes, that we will understand in this video. Anyway, if you are watching my video sequentially, you will find that in this video, I have taken a different approach. That is, I have taken the PDF directly here. And this is PSB Bras Power Electronics book, which is a standard textbook in Power Electronics. I think all of you know that and many of you are following this book also. Anyway, why I have taken the PDF directly here? This is because I want to show you one common mistake that all we do while studying power electronics. What we do when we study power electronics from the book? We start reading everything written on the book starting from the first line to the end line. And after reading some time, we find that power electronics is tough. This is because there are lots of equivalent circuits involved here based on switching. And there are lots of waveforms also. And this makes the power electronics really very tough when we are studying from the book. So what is the way out? The way is that you need a teacher and probably that is why you need a classroom also. But nowadays we are living in such a world where the virtual classes has become almost universal. And in this pandemic situation, we can see how true it is. Anyway, don't you worry. Study ETEC is here, the home for electrical engineering students. We are providing the best quality video lectures in electrical engineering. If you are new to this video, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of the new videos. Anyway, coming back to the topic, as you can see, few things I have underlined. So basically, you need to study these things from the book. You don't need to study everything in the book. So before coming to the discussion of effect of source impedance, let us go back to the previous circuit and understand what was the problem there. Then we will come back here again. Okay, as you can see here, this is the single phase full control rectifier and we know in the positive half cycle T1, T2 conducts and in the negative half cycle T3, T4 conducts. If we trigger T1, T2 at the point alpha, we will get the output voltage something like that and until we trigger T3, T4, this voltage will continue and we will get the negative swing considering the output to be continuous ripple free load current. And this will go on when we trigger T3, T4. This will be the output voltage waveform. So we see here when we trigger T3, T4 at that moment T1, T2 will be suddenly off and T3, T4 will be suddenly on. Similarly, at the point alpha also previously conducting thyristors T3, T4 will be suddenly off and T1, T2 will be suddenly on. This is because we did not consider any inductance in the input side. But if we consider the input inductance, the scenario will not be this one. So what will be it? That we will see now. In this circuit, you can see we have considered the input inductance LS, right? How the behavior of the circuit changes due to this LS. Now we will understand. As you can see in the waveform, this is the positive half cycle and this is the negative half cycle. We are considering the voltage to be V1 in the positive half cycle and in the negative half cycle, same voltage, but with negative sign so it will be our v2 okay so in the positive half cycle t1 t2 will be responsible for the current flow and the output current will be v1 in the positive half cycle and the same current will flow in the negative half cycle when t3 t4 conducts which is nothing but v2 and corresponding current will be i2 considering the load current to be i0 so the level of i1 and i2 will be same and they are nothing but the i0 now when we trigger the t1 and t2 at the point alpha we see that the previously conducting thyristors T3 and T4, they take some finite current to be zero. What does it mean? That means when we trigger T1 and T2, previously T3, T4 was in conduction and due to the presence of inductance, the current is not suddenly zero. It takes finite current to be zero. At the same time, T1, T2 current is not instantaneously I0. It takes some time. This is because we know this is the property of the inductor. We know it opposes the change of current, right? On the contrary, the behavior of the capacitor is that it opposes the change of voltage across it, right? So if it is so, we will say there is some intermediate region during which 
the previously conducting thyristors t3 t4 they are not completely off and now the incoming thyristors t1 and t2 they are not completely on so we can consider in this intermediate region t1 t2 t3 t4 all are in conduction state now the same scenario will occur at the point pi plus alpha where we see we are triggering t3 and t4 when we trigger t3 t4 previously conducting thyristors which are nothing but the t1 t2 they will take some finite time to be off and t3 t4 will also take some finite time to be on this is called the overlap angle so if we take this axis to be angle axis this will be the overlap angle and if you take time you can call it the overlap time anyway so this is the overlap angle you need to understand so what is the overlap angle this is the intermediate region when the outgoing thyristors are not completely off and the incoming thyristors are not completely on this will depend on the amount of how much inductance is present in the input side so what will be the effect of this overlap angle in the output voltage waveform if we consider t1 t2 t3 t4 all are conducting in the intermediate regions we can say the state is nothing but a short circuit state where this is acting like the free wheeling diode and the output voltage will be zero right so the output voltage in the intermediate regions we are getting zero voltage so this is the effect of inductance is that we are getting a zero voltage and due to which in the whole period of the output voltage some zero voltage duration is introduced and that will make the average voltage to be decreased this is what we learned physically now we will see the same thing mathematically so to understand it mathematically let me show you the direction of the current flow in the positive half cycle so this will be the direction of the current flow in the positive half cycle t1 t2 are short circuit and this is the polarity of the input voltage and the current will flow in this direction right and if it is so we can consider that there is a voltage drop in the inductance and we are considering the thyristors are ideal no voltage is being dropped here so if it is so we can write the input voltage minus this voltage drop equal to the output voltage right so that can be written as this one v1 the input voltage which is nothing but the vm sin omega t minus ls into di1 dt equal to the output voltage now we will see the output voltage can also be written as this one let us see how now let me erase this one in the negative half cycle the scenario will be like this now we can see this is the scenario in the negative half cycle the polarity has been reversed and now the current will flow in this direction and it will flow and it will come back to the negative of the supply so if this is so we can see the input voltage then the output voltage then the voltage drop in the inductance and that this will complete the loop and we will get the input voltage minus this voltage minus the voltage drop at the inductor equal to zero which is nothing but the input voltage minus this drop equal to the output voltage that is actually written here v2 minus this drop ls into di to dt which is equal to the output voltage and which is equal to the v1 minus ls into di1 dt so from this equation we can write v1 minus v2 equal to ls into di1 dt minus di2 dt now v1 equal to vm sin omega t the input voltage we know in the negative half cycle v2 equal to same voltage with negative sign so it will be minus vm sin omega t so by putting this value we can say the ls into di1 dt minus di2 dt equal to 2 vm sin omega t you have to just put the v1 and v2 so you will get this one now we are considering the load to be continuous ripple free which is i0 so we can write i1 plus i2 equal to i0 let me show you in the waveform as you can see in the positive half cycle this is i1 and in the negative half cycle this is i2 which is nothing but the load current i0 and in the intermediate regions we can see the i1 is decreasing and the i2 is increasing so in the intermediate regions we can take the average of them so that will also be equal to the i0 because the rate of falling and the rate of rising we are considering to be same so if it is so then 
from i1 plus i2 equal to 0 we can write di1 plus di2 equal to 0 because this is not changing with respect to time so from here di1 dt plus di2 dt equal to 0 and from here we are getting di1 dt minus di2 dt equal to 2 vm by ls into sin omega t which is this one so now from these two equations we can solve for di1 dt if i just add them we will get di1 dt equal to vm by ls sin omega t okay now we will put the boundary conditions of i1 to find out the expression of i1 what it is let us see in the waveform as you can see in the waveform at the angle alpha i is increasing so at the angle alpha it is zero then it is increasing and at the angle alpha plus mu which is the overlap angle we get the i1 to be equal to i0 and this level is the i0 for the output current okay so now we will put these two boundary conditions coming back to the equations we can find i1 equal to 0 at omega t equal to alpha and at omega t equal to alpha plus mu i1 equal to i0 putting them in this equation we will find the i0 to be vm by omega into ls cos alpha minus cos alpha plus mu now from this equation we can derive what is the value of cos alpha plus mu that we will derive and we will put in the equation of the average voltage now let us see how to calculate the average voltage let us go back to the waveform and we can see in the waveform uh, the voltage is starting from the alpha plus mu so the limit of integration will be from here to pi plus alpha but the period is from alpha to pi plus alpha so the period is alpha to pi plus alpha so pi plus alpha minus alpha equal to the pi is the period but as because we are getting zero voltage here so the limit of integration we can take alpha plus mu to pi plus alpha and putting these values we can get the expression of average voltage which is this one as we can see in the expression of v0 it will be vm by pi alpha plus mu to alpha plus pi and vm is going out of this integration and it will be the integration of sin omega t d omega t if we do this integration and put the limit we will find this will come to be this one now simplifying that we will get pm by pi into cos alpha plus cos alpha plus mu this is the expression of the average voltage in case of the full control rectifier considering the input impedance in this expression we can put the value of cos alpha plus mu which can be obtained from here and if we do so we will find the average voltage expression will be this one right so we are getting 2 vm by pi cos alpha minus something if you can remember that in case of the full control rectifier where we did not consider the input impedance we got the average output voltage to be 2 vm by pi cos alpha but due to the presence of this inductance we see there is a amount of voltage drop this is what we discussed a bit ago when we saw if there is zero voltage is introduced in the waveform we say that the average voltage will be decreased right this is now we are seeing this from the mathematical equations here from here we can conclude that if i0 is higher then the average voltage will be decreased and at the same time if ls is higher the average voltage will also decrease let us understand how physically this is happening you can see here if the level of i0 is higher which is nothing but the higher load current and if the load current is higher then the outgoing thyristors will take more time to fall to zero and the incoming thyristors will take more time to rise to that particular value of the load current and that will make the intermediate region to be higher that means the overlap angle will be higher now if we consider the source inductance is higher then we can see there will be more voltage drop in the positive half cycle as well as in the negative half cycle so the overall average voltage will be decreased now going back to the mathematical expressions again you can expect the questions numerical questions from here in the gate exam you can expect some logical questions from these waveforms in the gate exam also as you can see i have marked few portions you need to study these things from the book so whatever i discussed the necessary explanation i gave you so you need to just point out these things in the book and study nothing more is required so 
coming to the end we can see the consequence of the input impedance is written over here this is we took for the single phase full control rectifier in case of single phase half control rectifier this overlap angle is not a matter you know in case of single phase half control rectifier two lower elements are diode and diode do not require triggering and the conduction of the diode stops here and thyristor is triggered at this point so there is no question of overlap so that is why the overlap is not a problematic in case of half control rectifier hope you like the video if you have any doubts you can put it in the comment box i will give you the reply let me tell you if you are new to this video study etech is the home for electrical engineering students and our motto is to make a complete platform for the electrical engineering students we need a little bit support from you please subscribe to our channel and share among your friends that is what we need thank you keep watching keep building up the concepts see you in the next video